we are looking at standing firm. Standing firm. This is our month of standing firm. And today we will continue from where we left on Wednesday. The importance of being firm. Or the importance of standing firm. The importance of standing firm. The importance of standing firm. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. The brethren, be ye steadfast. NIV says, therefore my brothers. Therefore my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. So you are told to give your life fully, not half, full of it, the whole of it. He says, give your life fully, give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. And as you do so, let nothing move you. Why? Because at the end, your labor in the Lord shall not be in vain. Your work, the work you do for God is not in vain. So give your life to God. Give yourself to the work of God. Knowing that in the end, there will be a reward for you. I pray today in the name of Jesus, those of you that are firm, those of you that are standing firm in the work of the Lord, may the Lord give you a reward this month. May the Lord begin to reward you this month. In this season, may you begin to see the hand of God in your life as a result of standing firm with the work of God. Anybody here who is saying that I will stand with the work of the Lord, lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, say, my father, my maker, give me the grace, baptize me with the ability to remain firm, baptize me with the spirit of remaining firm. Remain firm. What is the importance of remaining firm or standing firm? Number one. I will go very fast because it's uh, we are just doing a recap and then when I arrive where we reached I will now slow down number one to be counted worthy of the kingdom of God if you are not firm in the Lord you will not be counted worthy of the kingdom of God so we remain firm we remain firm in the Lord so that we can be counted worthy <laughs> so that we can be counted worthy in the kingdom of God 2nd Thessalonians chapter chapter 1 oh glory to Jesus the Bible says 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1 chapter 1 verse 3 verse 3 from NLT NLT says this NLT says this dear brothers and sisters we can't help but to thank God for you why because your faith is flourishing so we are happy I am so happy that your faith is not diminishing your faith is not withering your faith is flourishing ask the person sitting next to you how is your faith ask another neighbor is your faith withering is your faith diminishing Paul anasema tunashukuru kwa sababu imani yenu inaendelea kuongezeka imani yenu inaendelea kukua na nguvu imani yenu inaendelea kunawiri i pray that your faith will begin to flourish this month so he says i thank god because you have stood firm in your faith You've not dropped God. You've not dropped your faith. You've not dropped Jesus because of this world. Ah, 
may your faith begin to flourish this year. And he says, and your love for one another is growing. The love of one another. Your love in this church for one another is growing. That is my prayer. That in Dominion Center, the love of one another will keep on growing. We will, we will stand with one another. We will fight for one another. We will pray for one another. We will walk with one another. There will be no divisions in this church. There will be no discords in this church. There will be no conflicts in this church. There will be no striving in this church. There will be oneness. There will be love. Look at your neighbor and tell them I love you with the love of Christ. So Paul says I thank God because you've stood firm. Ah, you've stood firm. Let's go all the way to verse 6 and see what he says. Verse 5. Give us verse 5. And God will use this persecution. So he says, okay, let's go back. Let's go back to verse 4. We, we proudly tell God's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness in all the persecutions and hardships you are suffering. Then continue. And God will use this persecution to show his justice and to make you worthy of his kingdom. Worthy of his kingdom for which you are suffering. So it didn't matter when there was suffering. You continued to love God. You continued to love one another. Even where there were challenges among yourselves. You continued to love one another. You have remained firm in faith. You have stayed firm. You have stood firm. You are not shaken by challenges. You are not shaken by the fact that people are talking. You are not shaken by the fact that others are leaving God. You have stood firm, loving God and loving one another. I pray that that will be said about Dominion Center. My prayer is that that will be said about your faith. Hallelujah. Let's go fast. I really wanted to go faster than this. Number two, to stick to the will of God. These are the importance of remaining standing. The importance of standing firm. The importance of standing firm. So number one is so that you can be counted worthy. Counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Remember he said in John chapter, it's only that we didn't read that one. Luke chapter 9 verse 62 that if anyone holds a plow and is plowing and then looks back, stops to plow and looks back and fall away and backslide. They used to love people and they have stopped loving people. They used to come early to church. They have stopped to come early to church. They, they used to support the work of God. They used to give themselves to the work of God. Now they have stopped. They used to love the church. They used to love soul winning. They used to go out and talk about Jesus to people. But now they have stopped. The Bible says they do not deserve, they do not deserve to be in the kingdom of God. They are not fit for the kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit to the kingdom for the kingdom of God. Somebody say, I refuse to look back. Say, I will not backslide. Say, I will not stop serving God. You remember in the book of Jer Eze Ez uh, Ezekiel, God saying that if somebody was righteous and then they stop doing righteousness and they start doing wickedness, the righteousness they did before will not be remembered until they repent. Somebody say, I refuse to go back. Say again, I refuse to look back. My work is to teach you. Your work is to respond. My work is to teach you. Your work is to decide whether you will believe or not. Somebody say, I'm believing. Say again, I'm believing. 
So importance number one is so that you can be counted fit and worthy of the kingdom of God. Number two, so that you can be able to stick to the will of God. So that you can be able to stick to the will of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Oh God, thank you Jesus. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all uh, to do according to all the law. So you cannot be able to do the will of God, the will of God, if you are not strong, if you have not stood firm, if you have not, if you have not uh, allowed yourself to be moved, you must make sure that you do not allow the devil to move you from God so that you can be able to stick to the will of God. People who backslide are people who allow the devil and other things in this life to move them from what they believe. To move them from the church. To move them from uh, serving God. When you are moved, when you allow the devil to move you from serving God, very soon the devil will be able to, to destroy you and to destroy your salvation. That is not happening to anyone of you here. Uh, am I hearing a believing amen? That amen is very weak. Shout a stronger amen. Shout a stronger amen. Number three, to be able to carry the presence of God. If you are not firm in the Lord, you cannot carry the presence of God. If you are not firm in the Lord, you cannot carry his presence. The presence of God is never carried by shaking vessels. A weak vessel cannot carry the presence of God. You have to be firm. You have to be firm during temptations. You have to be firm during sufferings. You have to be firm. You have to endure so that you can be able to carry the presence of God. So that you can be able to carry the presence of God. You will realize that you will never be able to help somebody else. If you have not been helped yourself. So you have to stay in the suffering. Until you see God helping you in that suffering. So that the next time somebody comes with their suffering and their challenges. You are able to tell them that nothing in this world that is new. So that you are able to tell somebody else that every temptation of man is common. According to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. All temptations, all temptations of man is common. It is common. I was there before. There was a time I was beaten and I did not die. So you will not die. There was a time my church did not have people. But now I have people, you know. You are able to encourage somebody. You are able to help somebody. When you yourself have been helped. Mm, that is why there is a need for you to remain standing during temptation. In the season of temptation. Somebody say I will not move. Oh say again I will not move. If you wait a little longer God will come. He says there is. There is no way God will ever tempt you with a temptation that you are not able to handle. The only challenge is not the challenge. The challenge here is not the challenge. The challenge is you not being able to stand. Being able to stand firm and wait for God to deliver you. He says that many are the affliction of the righteous. You are not alone. You are not the only one who is suffering. You are not the only one who is, is, is going through some challenges. He says he will make a way out. So you just need to remain there and wait for the time God will make a way out. He says that uh, even with all those afflictions, the Lord delivered him from them all. So you just need to wait. The challenge is you remaining standing. If you can be able to overcome the challenge of you not moving, the challenge of you not being tempted, then 
you can be able you will be able to see God somebody here will see God I say somebody here will see God oh glory to God number what number four <laughs> the importance of remaining standing or standing firm number four to become a good example to become a good example and especially in leadership to become a good example and a good leader to become a good example and a good leader every one of you here in one way or another you are a leader in your own respect you are a leader you are a leader somewhere you are either a leader to your children or maybe a leader at, at work maybe a leader to be but all of us here we are called to be leaders remember God said in uh, Romans chapter 8 that the world is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God of the sons of God the world is waiting for somebody to lead them the world is waiting for somebody to show them the way for somebody to show them the way the world is waiting for somebody to show them the way somebody say I am here I will be a good example say again I will be a good example the world is waiting the world is waiting Romans chapter 8 verse 19 well, the world is waiting the world is waiting the world is waiting the world is waiting the world is waiting. The Bible says for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is waiting for you to stand firm and show them the way. Show them how to overcome problems. Show them how to endure. Eh? Eh? To endure circumstances. To endure sufferings. Somebody say I will stand firm. Oh say I will stand firm. Somebody told me the other day that pastor if you don't come to church we are going to backslide over all of us. We are examples. If we can stay, if we can remain standing, if we can stand firm, people will not backslide. If I remain firm, if I stand firm, ooh, people in this church will not backslide. But if I am weak, everybody will <laughs> I believe to that person I believe to that person that person told me pastor if you don't come to church tomorrow all of us Quisha, we are dead we are, we are going to backslide all of us and I believed yes that was the voice of God through that person <laughs> so the next morning I came very early because I don't want to set a bad example because if I do, the, the world is doomed. The world is doomed. Because the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 9, as the priest, as, as the people, as the priest, as the people, as the priest, people will look like this, their priest. And sometimes even the priest will look like their people. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed. Pastor, do not be conformed. Usi badilishwe na watu Usi badilishwe na kanisa Kuna pastors wame badilishwe na kanisa Walikuwa wazuri, walikuwa napenda mungu Lakini kanisa Ika wabadilisha Wakakuwa watu wabaya Wakakuwa watu sugu Wakakuwa pa, mapasta sugu Kuna mapastas ambao ni sugu Kwa sababu ya ile moto Wame pitishiwa na washirika Wame badilishwa Na kanisa Ndiyo mana mungu anasema Na musigeuzwe na kanisa Do not be conformed Musifanane, musifanane. So Hosea nasema Hosea 4 uh, 9 That uh, as, the pri as the people As the priest As the people As the priest You are an example to the people And remember the priest here Is not only the pastor The priest All of us are made priests According to uh, Revelation chapter 4 5 verse 10. We are all made kings and priests. We are kings because the Lord has made us unto our God. Kings and priests. So akisema as the people, as the priest, anamanisha vile kanisa itakuwa, ndivyo hata dunia itakuwa. Ama dunia itakaa vile kanisa iko. 
So you are an example to the world. You are an example to the world. If you are not behaving well, if you are not standing firm during the times of temptation, then you are leading people astray. You are making people not to come to God. You are making you are causing people not to come to church. Because when they look at you, they don't desire your God. When they look at you, they are not happy. They are not happy with your lifestyle. And therefore, they cannot even come to, to church. They are not willing to come to church. They are not ready to serve your God. Because this, your God has not helped you. How can he help them? You are an example and you are a leader. So behave like one. Look at your neighbor with the eye. With the eye of the spirit. And tell them behave like a leader. Tell another neighbor behave like a good leader. Yeah, be a good leader. Be a good leader. Be a good leader in your, in your workplace. Where you work. Represent Jesus there. Are we not ambassadors for Christ? Represent Jesus there. Remember people are looking at you. You ought to have and display a good example. You ought to display a good example. Oh, Shekata Bayando. Look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear, I swear unto their fathers to give them. Joshua, you must, you must remain firm. You must be strong. You must stand firm. Because if these people will go to their promised land, it is because it will be decided and determined by your firmness. If these people in Kamulu will go to their promised land, if they will reach heaven, it is determined by how you stand firm. Will somebody say, I will stand firm. Lift up your hand and say, Father, give me the grace to stand firm so that my generation will not go astray, so that my generation will not perish. They will perish. Just like that person told me, Kamulu will perish if you don't come to church. They will backslide if you don't continue standing with God. Oh, somebody say, I will not backslide. Say, I refuse to backslide. And I refuse to cause other people to backslide. Hmm. Yes. Glory to Jesus. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Oh, glory to God. Are you learning something here? Mm. Are you saying that I will remain firm? Are you saying that I will stand firm? Yes. Eh? Let's read from NKJV. From verse 12. Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in what? In your conversation. The way you talk. The way you talk. Look at your neighbor and ask them the way you talk. The way you talk, does it exemplify the character of a born again Christian? Does it display to the world? An example to follow the way you talk. In what else? In love. In what else? 
in love. Do you love people? Or your work is to hate everybody who hates you. If somebody hates you, you hate them times ten. Hmm? Do you say tit for tat? Hmm. If you love me, I will love you. Tit for tat. If you hate me, I will hate you. Tit for tat. <laughs> if you support me, I support you. Titi for tati. If you are good to me, I will be good to you. Titi. If you are bad to me, I will be bad to you. Titi. Or tati. <laughs> I remove you. I delete your name from that list of Titi for Tati. In the name of Jesus. You will not appear in the list of Titi for Tati. In love. So you ought to love even your haters. You remember, it was our memory verse. Matthew 4, Matthew 5, 44. It was our memory verse since we were young in Sunday school. Love those who, even those who do what? Even those who hate you, love them. And pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Love your, Jesus, this is Jesus. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Hey, look at your neighbor and tell them, love your enemies. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus said, don't love your friends. He says, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Even those who persecute you, pray for them. Like Job. Job was told by God, if you want me to turn your captivity, that is Job chapter 10 and verse 42, if you want me to turn your captivity, you have to pray for your friends. Ambao wamekuja criticize all these seven months. You know, they stayed there and they criticized him. They criticized him. Wakamsema akasema wewe ulikuwa unajifanya mtakatifu sana sasa ona Mungu ameku amekufunua mbele ya watu amefunua uti wako ametuonesha wewe hauko kuwa mtakatifu ndio maana unapitia yale unapitia ewe imagine wakati uko na shida wakati uko na shida kabisa watu wa kanisa wanaanza kuongea wanaanza kusema tulijua tu hiyo biashara yake itaanguka tulijua tu atapoteza bwana tulijua tu kwa sababu anajifanyaga mtakatifu sana tulijua tu tulijua tu tulijua tu hataenda ngambo alikuwa anajifanya vile anaenda ngambo tulijua ataenda eh, tulijua hiyo siku haitawahi fika eh, imagine when people say that tulijua hata hiyo gari atauza hata hiyo nyumba atauza hata hiyo kanisa atauza tulijua tu tulijua tu tulijua ataishiwa alikuwa na ringa sana akiwa na gari alikuwa na ringa sana akiwa na nyumba alikuwa na ringa sana akiwa na kazi you know they, they, that is how they talked and then god says are you there <laughs> god says in job 10:42 no, 42.10. 42.10. John, job, job, 42.10. You know? He says, and the Lord, you know? <laughs> Go to verse 9. <laughs> hey, no, verse 10. Verse 10, sorry. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When? When he prayed for his friends. The same friends that were castigating him. When he prayed for them, the Lord turned his captivity. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Yeah, yeah. The reason why sometimes we are not moving with God and we are not being lifted and promoted by God, it is because we are not showing an example. We are not good examples in our love for people. So let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Eh? 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 
So he says in conversation, in words, NKJV, in words, so that we remove this charity thing. Charity is love. Charity, KJV uses charity and then the rest is love. So in love, in spirit, so you have to be spiritual. If you want to become influencers of people, you must become spiritual. You cannot influence anybody if you are not spiritual. You will not be able to influence anybody, even your children, if you are not spiritual. Become spiritual. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, plant me in the ways of God, in the ways of righteousness. And that's very, very important. In spirit, in faith. You must have faith. You must walk by faith. You should not be going around asking people to give you money. That is not a good example of a Christian. Borrowing money from everybody. That is not a good example. That is not setting a good example. Going to people's houses. Everybody knows you as a beggar. Everybody knows you as a beggar. He says, but be an example. Do not allow people to despise you, even if you are young. You can be young, but respectable. You can be young, but an influential leader. But for that to happen, it's not something that will fall on you from heaven. If you want people to respect you, if you want to command respect in your leadership and as a Christian, there are things that you must do and there are things that you must refuse to do. So if you have a problem, God says, stand firm in that problem and wait for me. Wait for God to come. Remain there in faith. Hata kama kuna shida imewaka moto. Hata kama shida zako, madeni zako, zimekua mingi mbaka sasa unaona ukichotwa. Wewe ka hapo uchotwe. Hata baada ya kuchotwa endelea kukana mungu. Wacha wakuje wafagie kila kitu kwa nyumba yako, lakini wewe uendelea kukaa hapo kwa imani. That's what God is saying. So set an example in faith. Be a man and a woman of faith. Hata kama ni kubaya aji. Hata kama ujalipa nyumba, endelea kuja kanisani, endelea kumtukuza mungu. Usiende ukiambia kila mtu vile ujalipa nyumba. Don't go to everybody telling them how your children are, are suffering. That is not setting a good example. He says, set a good example. Look at a neighbor and tell them, set a good example. Yes, yes, yes. Don't go everywhere looking for asking people to give you money. So, in faith. And the other thing is, in purity. In what? In purity. You have to be pure. You have to be blameless. If you want to set a good example. If you want to be an influencer. If you don't want to be despised. If you don't want your salvation to be despised. If you don't want the church to be despised. Then you must set a good example in purity. May the Lord give us the grace. I say, may the Lord give us the grace. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, give me the grace to stand firm in purity. Give me the grace to stand firm in faith. Give me the grace to stand firm in words, in conversation. Yeah, you know those, those things. Go study them carefully and see where you need to stand firm. What number is that? Number four. Number five, to realize progress in life. The importance of standing firm with God. The importance of standing firm with God. So after you've set a good example after you set a good example as a Christian, you don't go borrowing, you don't go uh, uh, gossiping, you don't go hating people, you don't go fighting. 
you are spiritual, you are not carnal, you think about God and godliness, you know. The other thing, the other stage is where now you begin to realize progress in life. Because he says in Psalms 34, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But if you can remain standing, the Lord will come to deliver you. 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 The Lord will come to deliver you out of them all. So there is a time that God will deliver you out of your debts. There is a time God will deliver you out of your problems. But you have to remain standing. You have to remain standing and focus on, on him. Focus on him. Because very soon God will, will make you to progress. Very soon God will help you to move forward. Now look at this. Psalms 1. Psalms chapter 1. Very, very important. Psalms chapter 1. In this church we believe in Bible. We believe in the Bible. We believe in the Bible. So we teach the Bible. We don't teach stories. We teach the Bible. We don't teach stories. We teach the Bible. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. When you are suffering, when you are in trouble, when you are in problems, people will give you a lot of counsel. People will advise you how to come out of your predicaments. People will teach you how to bribe to come out of the fix. People will teach you how to, you know, uh, use dubious or do dubious businesses for you to become rich easily and quickly. We are not called to become rich. We are called to work for God. The reason why you were created is so that you can serve the Lord. You were not created to become rich. <laughs> John the Baptist was very, very powerful and anointed. He never bought, he never bought one car. He never bought one donkey. He never bought anything. Yet, the Bible says that among the prophets, he was the greatest. Among men that were born by a woman, he was the greatest. He was the greatest of all. Yet, he never bought anything. Life is not all about, you know, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. There is something bigger than Mercedes Benz, as much as we love Mercedes Benz like me. There is something, there is something more important than Mercedes Benz. For instance, going to heaven is more important than a Mercedes Benz. Walking with God is more important than driving a Prado. Elder Rebecca. It's more important. Walking with God is more important. You better walk by foot and stay with God than drive a Prado and go to hell. Man shall not live by bread alone. There are other things that are better than bread. There are other things that are better than marriage. There are other things that are... You don't have to get married. It's not a must. Even Paul said that if you are not married, don't get married. But he says for the sake of going to heaven, get your wife, get a wife and get a husband. So get married so that you don't burn with your with passion. So that you don't burn with lust. Go to heaven so that you go to heaven. So get married. But you don't have to compromise your chance of going to heaven because of a man or because of a woman. Somebody say, I belong to Jesus. Oh, lift up your hand and say, I belong to Jesus alone. Yes, before that man comes to you, he should find you with Jesus. Before that woman comes to you, he, she should find you with Jesus. Before the Mercedes Benz come, the Mercedes Benz should find me with Jesus. Glory to God. Yes, Jesus first. Tell your neighbor, Jesus first. Tell your neighbor, heaven first. Yes. So remain standing. 
Remain standing. Remain standing. Don't fall because of a Mercedes Benz. Eh? I've seen people coming out of a marriage. A marriage that is very, very, you know, a man, living a man that is very rich. And they live such a marriage where there is a big house and there is a, there are, there are cars. And they live it. They live it for the sake of their peace. If somebody can leave Mercedes Benz for the sake of their peace and millions for the sake of their heart, for the sake of their peace, won't you do better for the sake of heaven? Won't you leave even more things and bigger things for the sake of going to heaven? Every one of you here will go to heaven. None of you here will backslide because of this world. I say none of you here will backslide because of this world. Somebody say, I will stand firm. Say again, I will stand firm. Yeah. So, to realize progress in life, you must remain standing. We were reading um, Psalms 1. Let's go back there. So, many are the afflictions. No, Psalms 1, verse 1. So, many people will come with counsel, with different kinds of counsel. They will tell you how to get married how to find a wife, how to find a husband. But this is what the Bible says. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He stands firm with the counsel of God. He follows the counsel of God. He stands firm in the counsel of the Lord. Somebody say, I will stand firm in the counsel of the Lord. Somebody say, I will stand firm in the wisdom of God. Yes, this world has a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom. But blessed, he says, blessed is the man that stays with the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. May the wisdom of God direct your paths. I say, may the wisdom of God direct your paths. So, if for you to be blessed, for you to progress in life, you need to stand. In the wisdom of God, in the counsel of God. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yeye furahayake, his delight. Furahayake, ni kukaa katika sheria za mungu. Wangapi hapa, watapenda sheria za mungu. That is how you are going to progress in life. He says... But his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law doth he meditate day and night. This person, he meditates, she meditates in the law and in the word of the Lord day and night. Usiku na mchana anaongozwa na neno la mungu. Let's continue verse 3, the last verse. And he shall be like a tree. This person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Where God will plant you is where your progress will never end. If you stand firm. If you stand firm. The importance of standing firm is so that God will plant you beside the streams of water. Beside the rivers of water. Your business will be planted beside the rivers of water. Beside the streams of water. Your marriage will be planted where it will continue to be nourished. God will never allow your marriage to wither. That is what he says. If you remain with me, if you remain in my ways and in my wisdom, I will plant your life beside the rivers of water. You will never have to, uh, to wither. You will never get dry. You will never get dry. You will always have uh, ideas. You will always have customers in your business. You will always have happiness in your marriage. There will always be happiness in your marriage. You know why? Because you remained in the wisdom of God. You got married. By the wisdom of God, you got married in the ways of God. You started your business in the ways of God. You started your ministry in the ways of God. You did not listen to the wisdom of the world. You stayed with the will, uh, the wisdom. You stayed in the wisdom of God. You stayed 
with the wisdom of God. You operated with the wisdom of God. You operated with the wisdom of God. May the Lord keep you in his will all the days of your life. May the Lord direct your life with his wisdom. May the Lord direct your ministry with his wisdom. You know, he says what? Eh? You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. May you begin to prosper from today. As you continue to operate by the wisdom of God and with the way, in the ways of God, you, may you begin to prosper. May your business begin to prosper. May your life begin to prosper. May you begin to excel. There is something about staying with God. The world has a lot of wisdom, but the only sure wisdom is the wisdom of God. The only working wisdom. Every other wisdom can sound perfect and you know, fantastic and wonderful and you know the devil knows how to decorate things the devil knows how to decorate things so he can decorate the wisdom and the ideas that he brings to you but the only sure way is the way of the Lord the only sure way is the way of the Lord if you want you can try the other way and come later to, eh, to write a book you can come later and write a book of how the ways of the world are working. The way, how the ways of the devil eh, <laughs> are working in your life. I've never seen such a book. All the books I've seen, all the books I've read about people that worked with the devil is how they were killed, is how their businesses were killed, how their children were killed, how their joy was killed, how the devil destroyed their lives. Don't join the gang. Don't join the, the camp of the enemy. Stay with God. Somebody say I will stand with God. Oh say again I will stand with God. Say again I will stand with God. Yes. You cannot stay with God and go wrong. You cannot be planted with God or in God and with her. And go wrong. The last one. The last scripture. As we finish. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and, be, and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do. According to all the laws which Moses my servant commanded thee. So God is telling you, everything your pastor is telling you, heed to it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Remain firm. Remain firm with the words of your pastor. And he says, <laughs> turn not from it. Do not turn away from the teachings of your pastor. And what will happen to you? To the right or to the left? That you may yes prosper. Ili weze kufanya nini? Ku prosper. Ili weze kufanikiwa. Ili weze ku prosper. That you may prosper whithersoever thou goest. If you remain firm in what I'm teaching you. If you remain firm in what I'm teaching you. No matter where you go. You can go to uh, Las Vegas. You can go to California. You can go to Cambodia. You can go to uh, Vietnam, you can go to Israel, you can go to Uganda, you can go to Loitoktok, you can go to Loliondo, but you will continue to prosper. You will continue to prosper. No matter where you go, if you remain with the words of God, if you remain in the wisdom of God, you will continue to prosper. Nobody here will stop prospering. Nobody here will wither. Nobody here will stop to see the hand of God in their lives. You will continue to see the hand of God. Oh, stand on your feet and wave your hands to the Lord.